In this video, we are going to talk about the bare essentials of a solar power system, and I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. We are not going to talk about different battery chemistries. We're not gonna talk about amps and volts and current. We're, we're not gonna talk about any of that. What this is geared towards is the complete beginner. Somebody that wants a mobile solar power off-grid system and doesn't want to buy a plug-and-play system. Somebody that sees other people doing it on Instagram and Facebook and other um, YouTube videos and they're like, hey, I want that. I want to be able to power my stuff. There's only a couple wires involved. I think I can do this. So if you're a do-it-yourself person, you can do this. I don't think it's safe to teach other aspects of electrical design to people, but this is so simple and the voltages are so low that you can't really hurt yourself that bad. All right, if you follow these steps, you should be good to go. So let's get started. These are the main components. You have a battery, which stores electricity. You have a solar charge controller, which evens out the power coming from the solar panel. So the solar panel creates electricity, but it comes in at a weird voltage. And for this 12 volt battery to charge, it needs to be at a very specific voltage. So the solar charge controller regulates the voltage so that this can charge safely. And it has all sorts of other special features, especially if you have what's called an MPPT charge controller, and especially if it has temperature compensation. All of these different metrics are used to make sure that this solar panel power that goes into the 12 volt battery is good for the 12 volt battery. These are kind of touchy. And whenever you wanna use power, you do not use power from the solar panel. You use power from the battery. The solar panel charges the battery. If you wanna charge it with something else, such as your own vehicle, which is the alternator, or a wind turbine, or some kind of hydroelectric dam or whatever, you need to focus on these are all different ways of charging a battery. The battery is the main part of your system. It's the heaviest, it's the most dangerous part of your system. This is the heart of the system. All the other things feed into it or take things out, but the battery is the one thing that you should focus on the most. Because a lot of people see the solar panel and they're like, oh, it makes electricity, right? And then you go on the solar charge controller and there's tabs for small appliances and it's like, no, you don't wanna do that. You connect appliances to the 12 volt battery. The fuse blocks, everything else comes to the 12 volt battery. You charge it with a solar panel. What do we got here? We've got a solar panel, we have a solar charge controller and a battery. If you know how to connect these three things together, you can charge up this battery and then use electricity from this battery. So in most systems, what you wanna do before you hook up anything is you wanna have a fuse. And a fuse is a tiny wire that when a lot of electricity goes through it, it will tear itself apart and blow. When you hear that a fuse blew or a circuit breaker blew, that's what this part is. And what you wanna do is you wanna put this on the positive terminal of the battery. Sorry for this picture, it won't be that bad after this, I promise. This fuse is going to protect all of this other stuff and also your appliances. Typically, I recommend putting a bolt-on fuse on the positive terminal of your battery. That's the easiest, safest way to do it. If you have multiple batteries, you can check out my book and learn how to connect them together. But for this example, one fuse on the positive terminal of the battery. So once you have the fuse connected, you can connect the solar charge controller to the battery. So first of all, there's going to be a battery depiction on the solar charge controller itself, or it will say battery. There'll be a negative and a positive. On the battery that you have that stores electricity, there'll be a negative and a positive. So what you wanna do is simply put one wire from the solar charge controller on the negative tab to the negative tab on the battery. And we are going to do black because that depicts negative. And then, and then on the positive side, what we wanna do is connect a wire from the fuse over to the positive tab on the solar charge controller. This should be done before you connect the solar panel to the solar charge controller. So what happens when you do this? The solar charge controller will have some lights or some kind of screen and will say on. It will say that the battery is typically a good charge. It will say green light or something like that. And that means that you hook these up to correctly. If you put the positive on the negative, and the negative on the positive, you can destroy the solar charge controller. So it is very, very important to get this right the first time. 
Once the solar charge controller registers and says, hey, this is a battery I can use, and there's some form of a green light that's on, you can connect the solar panel to the solar charge controller. And for this example, we are going to just have two wires, a negative and a positive, so that people can understand that there is two tabs, positive and negative, two tabs on each solar panel, positive and negative. And once you have it connected like this, the solar panel will produce the electricity and the solar charge controller will regulate it and then it will charge this battery. It does get a lot more technical and my book goes over this with lots of pretty pictures where you have multiple solar panels. If you have six solar panels, you need to wire them in series and in parallel. And what that means is that you put these wires in strategic configurations to make a voltage that agrees with the solar charge controller. Because depending on which solar charge controller you use will determine what voltage you want your solar panels to be producing. For now, you don't need to worry about that. And if you have a 100 or 200 watt system, you can buy what's called a branch connector to connect them. And so if you're a complete beginner and you have two 100 watt solar panels, for example, what you wanna do is use a branch connector and it's going to be this little connector right here and right here. All it does is it takes the positive from this one and a positive from this one and attaches it to the positive over here. It's all plug and play. If you buy a branch connector that works for most solar panels, it's going to be an MC4 connector. You can check these out on my website. You literally plug it in and then you'll have two wires going to the solar charge controller. Very, very simple. So we have a charging system. All right, this is great. We can charge up this battery and it will charge in a few hours depending on the size of the battery and the size of the solar panel array. But how do we use power from the system? So typically people will want to have DC 12 volt, the same as the battery, and also AC 110 volt. And so what we want to do to create these voltages is to run other fuses. All right, so for an inverter, the inverter can be attached directly to the bolt-on fuse if the fuse is large enough. I don't want to get into too many details, but most inverters come with a fuse or you have a bolt-on fuse on your system anyways, and it doesn't really matter. So check out my book if you're building a specific size system. If not, reference whatever the manufacturer recommends. So the inverter is easy. You can buy cables with a built-on fuse and you wire it straight to the battery. And to show this to you guys, I put a little box that says inverter. You're going to have a positive wire and a negative wire that come out of the back of this thing. The positive wire is going to be depicted by red. So most inverter come with big, thick red and black wires. The negative goes onto the negative on the battery. And then the positive, like I was saying, goes onto the bolt on fuse directly. Unless this wire has its own fuse, then we can connect it to the positive terminal of this battery. Now, with the inverter, you plug things into it. It's an AC electricity creator. So all of the plugs inside of a house that you plug things into, you can plug into an inverter. But what about 12 volt stuff? A lot of people with mobile off-grid solar power systems want to be able to power, you know, random 12 volt stuff, cigarette lighter stuff. Um, they want also USB chargers that hook up with cigarette lighters. Lots and lots of appliances that you can use with 12 volt. And so for that, we need a fuse block. The reason we need the fuse block is because the wires that exit out of the fuse block and go to the appliances like this will be different sizes. And so you need different size fuses for different sizes of wire. Because if you use a fuse that is too big or too small with the wrong size of wire, you're going to have problems and you can cause fires and that's really bad. And so in order to, you know, hook up different kinds of 12 volt appliances, you need a fuse block. I promise this is a lot easier than it looks. A fuse block is going to connect directly to your battery and then you connect all of your appliances to the fuse block. You can also, instead of wiring the solar charge controller to a bolt on fuse, you can typically wire it through the fuse block because the fuse block connects to the battery. So I just added some more lines We've got a positive that goes to the fuse block and a negative that goes to the fuse block. The fuse block is very simple to use. I love them. They're very nice. You can use crimp connections to attach things to the fuse block very easily. 
But all you need to know though, is that the fuse block is for DC appliances and the inverter is for AC appliances. The inverter fuse block and solar charge controller should be pretty darn close to the battery. But sometimes these things create heat and you do not want the battery fluctuating in temperatures that much. So you wanna make sure that all of these, these things right here are close but still able to cool themselves, especially the inverter and the solar charge controller. The solar charge controller will usually have fins on the back to dissipate heat into the environment. The inverter will typically have its own cooling fan. Some inverters have just cooling fins, so you have to think about that. Once you have the inverter fuse block connected to the battery, you can run different appliances off of it and you can take power from it. But how do you know how much power is in the battery? And so there's special little things called shunts. And what a shunt does is it goes on the negative terminal of whatever you want to measure. And so typically I have a shunt on the solar charge controller side of it, and I can tell how much electricity is going through this one wire. And the reason that this is beneficial is I can know how much power my solar panels are producing. I have found that that's more beneficial than knowing how much power I am drawing from the 12 volt battery. You can also make a shunt that goes to the appliances. But if you just watch the voltage of the battery, you can typically know how much power is inside of it. Not all the time. So get this, a 12 volt battery when it's fully charged is going to be 12.6 volts. And that just means that it's a full charge. There's a lot of potential energy. And then when it's around 11.6, it's completely depleted. Typically around 12.1 to 12.2 is very low for most solar batteries. I typically recommend people go down to 12.2 to 12.3 volts, and that is a safe amount so that you do not damage the battery. Because if you over discharge or use too much electricity from this battery, it will damage it, no matter what kind of battery you have. A lithium battery typically has a system to monitor how much capacity it has. And when you run the battery too low, it will shut itself off from the appliances and this is very useful and this is another reason why lithium batteries are really awesome. You don't need to know about that yet, but you need to know that if you use too much power from this, you're going to damage it. And I mean, honestly, today, solar panels and solar charge controllers, this stuff is cheap. It's a couple hundred dollars. The battery, it's gonna be around a thousand. So, I mean, about 3,000 if you want a good lithium battery. If you want just cheap deep cycle lead acid, then it's going to be around a thousand, 700 if you're lucky. So you don't want to mess up this battery. That's what I'm trying to say. And also solar panels are very robust. These things last, I've never had one go bad on me unless it was a cheap Chinese one. So this is, like I said earlier, the heart of the system. You want to get this right. All the wires that go to and from the battery need to be big enough so it can carry enough electricity so there's no heat developing in anything. So everything can work in a healthy fashion for many years to come. So let's talk about safety. If one of these wires touches one of these wires, a fuse will blow. But in this case, see how the fuse block is connected directly to the positive terminal? If this wire was to touch this wire, and there's no fuse in line here, even though it's a fuse block, there's no fuse right here, this can catch on fire. It can get really hot. It can cause other things to combust nearby. So whenever you connect something to the positive terminal, it needs to be on the bolt-on fuse. And some fuse blocks can actually connect directly to the positive terminal and that's very convenient. But what you need to know is that this positive terminal on the battery is the one spot that you need to be very careful of. It needs to be protected from other metal objects around it. You want to make sure that there's no water that can get to it. The negative you can have exposed to whatever, it doesn't even matter. But the positive on the battery, that's where the problems can occur. You need the fuses on there and you need to protect it. That's pretty much it. I hope this video helps some of you guys. I hope it clears up all the questions I've been seeing. Let me know if you guys want to see any videos on any more in-depth you know, questions, more technical aspects of solar power system design. I would love to do it. I have this new setup with this little board. We can do all sorts of videos now. It's awesome. I got some new lights so I can do educational videos. And also check out my book, all right? I know you guys wanna learn how to do this on YouTube for free. It's easy, you watch the video, you sit in the comfort of your home. But when it comes to solar power, it's good to buy a book that you can reference. There's a lot of things you will not be able to learn in the videos because you need to reference it, like wire gauge size, fuse blocks, I mean, 
All of these things, you need a book, you need a guidebook. You don't even need to read this whole thing. You can reference this and build your system while you read it. It's a very simple, easy to follow book. I mean, the reviews speak for itself and it's a bestseller right now on solar power on amazon.com. So please check it out. I hate sounding like a salesman, but it's so hard to communicate everything that I want in these videos. There's a lot to talk about. So I hope those basic fundamentals will help you guys. Let me know if you have questions and I'll talk to you later. Bye.